We are asked to determine whether this integral is convergent or divergent, and you're probably completing this question within the context of improper integrals. And normally improper integrals have either a positive infinity or a negative infinity or even both for the upper and or lower bounds. But in this problem, we don't see that. So it's not obvious that this integral is improper. But what we do is look at the bounds very carefully. We are integrating from negative two to three. And there are several numbers between there, of course, but if you notice, zero is particularly problematic here because if you try to plug zero into the original function, you would have 20 divided by zero, which is undefined. So you have a discontinuity in the function at x equals zero. So you can't just straight away integrate from negative two to three, otherwise you're basically disregarding that discontinuity. You have to develop a method for analyzing that discontinuity within the context of the problem. And what we do is we actually break the integral up into two separate integrals. We're going to go from negative two to zero for our first integral, and then we're going to do integrate from zero to three for the second one. So basically what we're saying is we're going to rewrite this integral and break it up. So we'll have from negative two to zero of our expression. And then whatever that integral is, we will add to this integral from zero to three. Now, if it turns out that one or both of these integrals is divergent, then the answer to the question is that the overall integral is divergent. So what we'll do is we'll analyze this first integral and if that one turns out to be divergent, then we'll actually be done with the problem already because it won't matter what the second integral does. But let's find out what happens. So how do we handle that discontinuity at zero? Well, we replace zero with a variable, usually chosen to be t, and that is legitimate as long as we take the limit as t approaches zero. This keeps the problem the same. And technically, if you look at our little picture here, we would be approaching zero for this first integral from the left side of zero. So we'll put a little minus sign on there to indicate that it's from the left. And then we're going to integrate the expression. Now, instead of doing 20 over x to the fourth, why don't we bring the x to the fourth to the numerator and rewrite it as 20x to the negative four. That's gonna make our integration a lot easier. Now we all know how to integrate this. It's a basic one. You're just gonna add one to the exponent so it becomes 20x to the negative three. And then you're gonna divide that by the new exponent. So you're gonna divide by negative three. We can put the three there and the negative sign out there. It looks a little nicer. We're still doing the limit as t approaches zero from the left and we're gonna put in the bounds from negative two to t. Now to help us understand what's going to happen next, why don't we take x to the negative three and move it to the denominator. Just remember that when you do that, you change the exponent to a positive value. So we're now going to have negative 20 over three x cubed. And again, evaluated from negative two to t. Next, we'll plug in the bounds. Remember the upper bound is plugged in first. So you're going to have negative 20 over three, well, what was supposed to be a three t cubed, and then minus the negative 20. Now, wait a minute, it's gonna be minus negative, so let's just do plus 20 over three times negative two to the power of three. Now, something interesting happens here because we're letting t approach zero. So basically, you can plug zero in for t. So when you do that, you're gonna get negative 20 over three times zero approached from the left cubed plus whatever this is over here. And I say whatever this is, because what's gonna really matter is what's going on over here. Now you can see at a glance that you're gonna end up with negative 20 divided by zero. So right off the bat, we know that this is not gonna work for us. It's going to be undefined. More specifically, you can see that because zero is a, being approached from the left, think, think back of a number line or to a number line. Let's say this is zero, you're approaching from the left. You're approaching zero, so what you can imagine doing is taking a value that's really, really close to zero on the left side of zero. So some really teeny tiny decimal, but it would be negative because you're on the left side of zero. So, you know, to help you understand this, you might wanna pick up a calculator and try plugging in a really, really tiny decimal, but negative. So for example, you could do negative 0 0.000001 and then raise that to the power of three, plus the same thing over here. Now on a calculator, if you did this, and I'm punching it in right now, you're gonna end up with a very large positive number. 
So when I did mine, I got like seven times 10 to the 21 or something like that. So the bottom line is you can see from a little bit of calculator play that this is gonna go to positive infinity. So it just doesn't matter whatever this finite result is over here because we're adding it to infinity. This means that this first integral is infinite, which means that this first integral is divergent, which means we're done with the problem. It doesn't matter what the second integral is here. We already have our answer because the first integral diverges.